Hey guys, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. Today I'd like to discuss the metronome. Uh, a lot of people have had some questions about some what they might consider deficiencies in the metronome in Reaper in that you can only have very basic subdivisions that consist of either triplets or quarter notes. And while that may be sufficient in some cases, other people may want to have more subdivisions and more complex metronome patterns. So I'll show you a way that you can use Reasynth to create your own metronome. I'm going to start with a blank project here, and I will right-click to insert a virtual instrument on the new track and insert an instance of Reasynth on that track. Uh, the reason for choosing to insert a virtual instrument is that that automatically creates the input as a MIDI input instead of uh, one of your physical inputs like an XLR or a quarter inch. I did find that I would like to set the decay time a little bit lower, like maybe around 25 milliseconds, and that helps if you're using faster tempos to make sure that all the notes are heard. Uh, all the rest of this can be left at its default, although you may want to edit this later down the line to better suit the sound that you're looking for. Now that I've got Reasynth added on this track, the track is automatically armed and record monitoring is set. I will left click and drag to create a time selection of one measure and then go to your insert menu and insert a new MIDI item. That MIDI item will be exactly those uh, four beats or one measure that we've dictated. Now right now I'm, I'm using the default 4-4 time and 120 beats per minute, but this can be whatever you need for your project. I'll double click the MIDI item to enter the MIDI editor, and up here in the toolbar I've got diamond notes as my selection. All that will do is make sure that any note that I enter is a single quick hit instead of being a long note like what you would normally have in the MIDI editor for, say, a piano or something of that nature. Uh, with this armed and record monitoring on, I can click on anything here and I'll be able to, to hear what that note will sound like. I typically like to start with C6 for my primary beat. You may find that annoying, but it, uh, it does work. So I will, with diamonds selected, add my first beat there on the one. Here's my second beat. I will add that at beat 2, beat 3, and beat 4, that being C6 to C5. Now what that'll sound like, once I play it, is this. Now let's say that you wanted to have eighth notes instead of quarter notes. You can edit your grid down here at the bottom to show the eighth notes. And I can go and then add those uh, secondary beats there. So now my pattern sounds like this. Now the flexibility of this is that each of these notes can be whatever pitch you want. So if I wanted to make every other beat a different note, I can do that as well. Now my pattern sounds like this. And basically, you can make it whatever subdivision and whatever note value that you want. But just for the sake of simplicity, let's go back to our quarter notes for now and finish up this. Get that back up to C5. So I've got one measure, and of course, that's nowhere near long enough for the project. At this point, what I can do is take this um, MIDI item and drag it out as long as I need for the project. Or further, you know, I typically just like to run it a long ways out just to make sure because I'd rather have too much than not enough. Now, another uh, interesting flexibility of using it this way is that if you have tempo changes across the project, like let's say we go eight measures and then at measure nine, I will insert a, a tempo marker and I'm going to go from 120 beats per minute to 175. The MIDI has stretched to fit that, and let's say at measure 10, I want to do the same thing, and I'll go and add a tempo marker again, and go to 100 and, well, let's go back to 120. That'll be drastic enough to hear it. So everything past that has stretched to fit as well. So if I go back one measure before the change, here's what we have. So the MIDI will follow whatever tempo you place on the project. Another thing I like about this is the flexibility of being able to route to hardware outputs. So if you've got 
um, additional headphone outputs, for example, you can route this to the headphone amps to create monitor mixes that your performer can change to hear more or less of whatever tracks they want. I'll cover that more in detail in a later video, but that's the basics of how you can create your own MIDI track that has the subdivisions and the sounds that you need. And that should help some of you that need something a little bit better than the default Reaper metronome has to offer. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to support uh, the channel and help to keep putting out videos similar to this, check out the Buy Me A Coffee link down below. It's not necessary, but it sure would help. Thanks again.